Hello, I think I've got an interesting one for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the Terra Master uh, 8 Bay sort of indie me NAS. So reason for this project is I've been currently using, well, just a single NAS drive or um, SSD drive for um, handling video editing and that kind of thing. And I wanted fast storage, but I want to be able to coordinate it among, well, the new test system and my main computer as well as my laptop so I can kind of get at it anywhere that I'm located from any computer. So high speed storage, networking, let's take a look at it. As a side note, this box is really slippery. I kept dropping it. On the inside, you get this pretty good packaging. And there's the device. Packaging continues. And this must be the power brick and other good stuff. Now, there's some specs about it. So it can hold up to eight NVMEs, which is more than I'm gonna need. I'm, I'm only gonna be using like four but I want to be able to have future proofing in case I expand it or whatever. Uh, I don't really have plans there, but um, you can hold eight. I'm only gonna be using four. Uh, it has 10 GBE networking. So that was a big one for me so I can actually utilize all that NAS speed. And its price tag was actually fairly affordable. Most other ones seem to be over a thousand dollars that give you 10 gig networking and anything more than four bays. Um, realistically, I could have gone by with five, I was thinking about just doing a Synology and using uh, SATA-based um, SSDs, but ended up choosing to try this first because NVMEs will be, I think, easier to purchase in the long run down the road than SATA SSDs. I just don't know when that's going to end, and I didn't want to take that risk personally. Uh, pretty small, compact power brick. Uh, oh, it comes with a networking cable. I did not see that. What is the rating on it? So it is CAT6, so that is good. It means it can handle the full speed. We got the rest of the power cable. It means I cut a little out of screws, a little screwdriver. And what's in this box of goodies? Oh, is this the heat sinks? Yes. So pretty basic. They feel aluminum to me, uh, not copper, which is fine. Um, the, the reason that's fine is actually because the SSDs in this are only going to be running at like I don't remember if it's Gen 3 or Gen 4 or 1X, which is going to be very, very slow, but it's still going to be enough to saturate a 10 gig connection, which is kind of what, uh, what I was aiming for. So here it is. Uh, on the back, you got an HDMI. So if you wanted to install, I guess, an operating system on it, or you can do a display out to run this on a TV for like a Plex or something like that. I'm not an expert on that kind of thing. So if I'm, uh, don't pull me on everything. Um, it does come pre-installed with uh, an operating system. Uh, two, what is that, 10 gig per second, and one up there that is also 10 gig. Uh, and that's all there is. On the back, just got a little screw. So as we take this thing apart, it's gonna be just that easy for to simply. Maybe not. Might help if I was pushing the right way, so you push from the bottom towards the top, and it slides right out. So as we take a look at the board, it comes with one, um, what's that, 16 gig uh, DDR5? Uh, yep, DDR5. Uh, sodium right there. I think I saw it's expandable. As a note, it is not expandable. There's only one slot right there. I'm going to go ahead and just put it back in. But you certainly could put in a larger module if you were so inclined to, to get more RAM. Um, I don't know what the cable. So the fans might be a problem if they go bad. Uh, just finding replacements that are. What size is that? Hang on. Well, in my home cast, I can't find my calipers, so we're gonna use just a regular. Yes. That looks to be about four and a half centimeters, or a forty millimeter slim. Well, what to be? Uh, Forty-five millimeter fan. So it might be hard to find if they ever go bad, but you would need to pop out some screws around the edges and should be able to come out. But in terms of just being able to get out what you need to get at, so this is gonna need the system on chip, the processor. Um, so obviously airflow is needed here just to draw air through it. Uh, if the fans ever died, you could always just slap a fan against the front and have force air through it that way. Uh, and then you got four on this side and four on that side, and they are labeled. NVMe 1 through 8. So I didn't talk about this before, but the power button is on this side. So it just means it's kind of 
I don't know how you'd have it sit, but you know, this looks like the back. So the airflow is kind of cross path on it. Um, everything else about it must be just, uh, what's this, like power cable for controlling the fans. Um, yeah, it's a cute little box. The frame on it is plastic. It's fine, it's sufficient, no worries there. And now we just need to pop it up with, with some SSDs and give it some basic testing. And before I forget, these are the SSDs that are going to be installed in it. We got a Sabrinth Rocket 4 Gen 4, not that I can use it. A Sabrinth Gen 3. And in Inland, this is a Micro Center brand. And then I have an old uh, 980 Pro, just because this has uh, provisioning that allows you to use mixed drives and get full capacity. And we're going to test that. So let's set it up. Okay, so you want to go to this website, the tnas.local. And we're going to start. And now it's looking. All right, it is now doing its thing. All right, it's been going for maybe two or three minutes. TOS is being installed. Please wait, 60%. Can take up to 10 minutes. I'm going to just do snippets of this process. All right, it's been making a couple beeping sounds. Basically, it is restarting and just stay right here on this page. Okay, now a little bit of the startup process. You can reboot or shut down. All applications, back up, control panel, useful tools. I'm probably not gonna use these. Oh, there we go. I wanna create a volume. And I wonder what this is. So I would like to note that I didn't actually select what RAID type I wanted. It just automatically started with um, T RAID, which is actually what I wanted to use because it gave me maximum storage space while utilizing the three SSDs I'm giving a test on this. So while this is currently synchronizing, so it does say it's going to take 147 minutes. So uh, it might take a little while. Um, security advisor is in here and I've turned on a bunch of stuff, like isolating. Okay, click configure, it's checked. But yeah, it's telling me that it's not. Um, I don't completely understand why it's telling me I'm at risk when I'm not. Um, and every single time you adjust one of these, the system has to restart. Oh, I see over there in the bottom right there, right now. The whole system restarts. It takes about five minutes each time for the restart. Um, I don't see anything in here for data scrubbing, which I personally think is important. Um, but yeah, okay, I found some more settings. So under disk, we have a different disk and it tells you the overall health. Um, you know, just clicking through it. How are they doing? Their temperature, they're running a little bit toasty. I don't have the heat sinks installed right now, but I do have a fan blowing on it. Uh, kind of off to the side, so it's not going to overheat, and the speeds are not fast enough that I'm overly concerned at the moment. Uh, it's got smart. It's currently not working. Uh, disk log. Iron Wolf Health. If we come through this, can I change the size of this? Yes. Um, system log, ports, just kind of says whatever stuff is. Uh, processes, there we go, it's operating services. I'm not using any right now, I don't really plan on it, just gonna use it as more or less basically like a dumb storage. Resource monitor, this one's pretty important for overall utilization. Uh, overview, uh, system fan speed, NVMe disk one, CPU temperature, device temperature. Uh, oh, the networking speed, how long it's been operating, we got the system, security, uh, yeah, in there, the firewall, uh, count, good. You want to make sure that someone can't do too many attempts um, within a certain time period to kind of just kind of brute force the way into your system. And... I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff, but I can sort of generally remember what I was from Synology. 
power and hardware automatic mode uh, just leave it on automatic uh, disk sleep holder SSD so they don't go to sleep uh, wake on LAN sure uh, I can turn on a schedule in here and if I'm gonna have it hooked up to a ops a backup power supply I do recommend that that is very important region and language eh, I don't want to save anything uh, I have no idea where that is all right as we work our way back up you can have hyper caching I guess that's SSD cache hot spare uh, USB device virtual disk then we got the disks we already took a look at that the storage manager so if we click on the pool we can come up here to settings and fast sync or set limitations or slow sync um repair i want it to repair if it ever needs to quickly so i'm just setting that on and i can't mess anything up in this but a lot of that same stuff is available here in the control panel and i'll check in and see how it's doing after this is done processing the drive and having it all set. One other thing issue that I have with this system is that it does lack smart. So I can check the disks and how they're doing and how the partitions are laid out, but when it comes down to it and I want to actually monitor them, I cannot monitor smart. I could come in here and say enable bad sector warning. I do apologize. I'm filming my screen. Uh, OBS was not working at this time. So I can at least get some kind of warning, but there are just a few key disadvantages. Before I uh, start really going into what my thoughts about this and doing a little bit of a testing on it, I want to thank uh, my viewers, you, you guys, for watching my videos. And I want to thank my subscribers for making this channel possible. Uh, you guys are awesome. And I'd particularly like to thank my YouTube and Patreon members. It is through your support that this... Uh, I'm able to purchase equipment and do fun testing as well as uh, buy fans. This one is kind of my own expense as opposed to a channel expense. But uh, it's you guys for returning in that make it all possible. Across two computers, these are the speeds that I'm getting. Not They're not simultaneous. The one over here, this is supposed to be a 5 gigabit, per ne get five gigabit networking connection, while the, the one on the uh, right side is supposed to be only 2.5. But the 2.5 is operating faster than the uh, 5, so I have no answer. Um, I was about to just be like, screw it, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna return and get something else, but uh, it seems to be operating the way it should, but it's not operating as fast as I had hoped. Next, we're gonna see the results for them running simultaneously. So obviously the network speeds between the two is slightly different, so they're finishing at slightly different times, but they're both being operated by the two, so one that's supposed to be five gig operating at 2.5 speeds, the one that's 2.5 operating at five gig speeds. Um, this raises questions. I have no idea why, but um, it does mean I'm getting the full speed out of it, though not in the way I was expecting. Okay, this time I gave this side a 20 second head start. I mean, 2.5 gig. Oh, this might have a 5 gig driver, not, but it's registered. I, um, I don't know. It'd be nice if it, it's sufficient. So it means even if I switch it to a different one, I'd be stuck with the same problem that I'm seeing on this side. Um, this side is unfortunately in, with a USB type uh, external adapter for 5 gig speeds, but either way, 20 second head start for this side to try to load these up at the same time to see if I'm uh, maximizing the throughput of the um, or as close to that I can do with my setup on the network card on the uh, NAS itself um, just to push it out because I don't have a one gig uh, I've got 10 gig ethernet um, uh, what's it switch and a, um, a router but my PCs only pop out apparently 5 gig or 2.5 or whatever it is. So obviously this I just started first. Oh, good. They're operating at close to the same time. Uh, obviously, it's not slowing down, so it seems to be doing okay. All right, and this is the final result. I do apologize. I can't screen capture two computers at the same time. Um, so 
it appears I can get full speed out of it. Why this one is operating at so slower speeds than it's listed it should, I have no idea. But um, I need to think about how I would use the NAS to make sure it's what I really want, considering that I'm not getting the five gig speeds or 500 megabyte speeds that I was expecting on this side because I was expecting 500 and 250. And this side was okay because I'm going from a hard drive. But I was expecting 500 there. Okay, I just want to note I got a 10 gig network adapter to give it a test. And now we're gonna paste. Six hundred, five hundred. Well, I would hope that it would be a little bit faster, but that's acceptable. I was hoping it would be a little bit more stable at about a uh, like eight hundred plus, but there we are, seven hundred megabit per second. Some fluctuations. Or that's the speeds I'm getting while loading the files onto it for the Crystal Disk Mark run. And... Hmm. All right, and these appear to be what the close to what the final results would be. So writes are significantly faster than reads for whatever reason, but that is the speed that I would be hoping to see. So, seems acceptable. All right, I wanna give my final conclusion. I need to put the heat sinks on this for final deployment, but I wanna talk about my overall thoughts. So, one computer is kinda of acting a little bit weird with it, the other one is acting completely normal. I've decided to keep this, and I wanna talk about some caveats I have with this overall implementation. I would not trust this with your valuable data. That's kind of end of story, meaning long-term storage. If you're talking about short-term stuff, like uh, temporary random write access, like I'm gonna be using it for uh, video editing and stuff like that. So it's gonna have a bunch of temporary files on it and then I'm gonna have a secondary copy on a different NAS with data scrubbing and backup, blah, 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 blah. So I wouldn't store like my family photos on this because this doesn't have data scrubbing, doesn't have checksum built into it. And uh, that's, Really my only real problem with this NAS is that it's missing those features. I like that I have hybrid RAID because I have a one terabyte and then three fours. And then I got room for, you know, four more drives sort of there. It's significantly cheaper than other options that have similar storage capabilities, but doesn't have this hybrid RAID uh, capability. The CPU in it is actually more powerful than my laptop. Um, it's really funny, it's, it's an eight core. It's pretty beefy actually, uh, but lane limitations, but it's perfect for a 10 gig NIC or um, RJ45. So um, I think it's really good. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, will allow me to utilize my files from any computer in the house without needing to walk around with a hard drive, basically, because that's where it was stored on before. And um, it's pretty affordable overall. So yeah, that's basically the conclusion is uh, not long-term storage in terms of it, but if you want to use it as a random rewrite or as a little miniature... Um, what do you want, like Plex server or something like that? This would be a great little option. Uh, if you're looking for something for long-term data storage to keep your valuable, I don't know, Excel tables or family photo safe, I would look at something else that has um, other features. But I think it's great. I like it. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me here on Computer Jack and More. Please subscribe for more content. 